And we have a really crazy draft, and that's saying something for LGD because their drafts are typically very crazy indeed. Yep. And they can't see the dog, Cinder. That's unfortunate. I'm holding a dog. Yep, you're holding the decapitated head of a dog. Very important stuff. But yeah, there are... Be... I was going to keep going, but go ahead. Yeah, I, I just love interrupting you. I like listening to myself more than you. I feel like yep, there's more... I, I understand that. There's more things coming out of that in the, at the end of the day. Uh, yeah, well, what can I say? What a draft from, from PSGLGD. Okay, back to you, Shannon. <laughs> Well, I was just going to say there's three teams. I don't know if you feel the same way that have caught my eye for this tournament so far that are just playing at an unbelievable level. Uh, one of which that's not in this game mm. is Bet Boom. I, I feel like they have kind of the Eastern European vibe where they can give up their leads a lot, so maybe not stable, but their ceiling is ridiculously high. And then these two teams. EG has mm. played so well this tournament, extremely stable. They can come back from behind. They've done it so many times before. And then LGD pick whatever the hell they want and they make it work. So they're definitely the most exciting team to watch, I think, because of that reason. And I do think until today, Nine Pandas, they have the best score in the group, right? I think they went 10 and 4 as the only team. The second best score of anyone was 8 and 6. But today they kind of got handled. So they did. I think uh, maybe a little bit of a downswing for them. But yeah, these two teams, uh, and the LGD in particular, obviously haven't lost a series yet, together with Betboom, the only two lossless teams in stage 2. Uh, and yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot to cover with these drafts, right? There's so many new things. I this is the first Elder Titan we get to cast this tournament. I think it's the first Marcy we get to cast probably as well. The first Primal too, right? Like we've cast none of these three, I do believe. Uh, I think all of EG's heroes we have definitely covered at least once. So a little bit more standard, and that's something that's always worth considering in games like this is. How comfortable is a team like EG playing against this? Because this is not the kind of stuff you face a lot in scrims, right? Like many of these heroes that you might not have played against for weeks. Yeah, um, maybe so. in pubs, that's about yeah. it. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe even that. Because it's like Elder Titan is a very uncommon pick right now. The Primal is somewhat of a flavor thing in pubs sometimes, and so is Marcy, but definitely not some of the more common things for EG to have the experience with in it. That can expand into, you know, a, a laning stage that could be a little bit tricky. Like, do you know your limits? A lot of the times with these players at this level, once the meta is established, teams have a very good understanding of how far you can push your advantage and when you need to back off. But when you're not fully in that muscle memory, so to speak, about how strong the heroes are, you might make missteps. Yep. Um, We'll see for LGD. I mean, I wonder how practiced they are with their heroes, right? Well, the good news is you can't really reduce Doom's armor much because they deleted it all in this last patch, right? So, not the word yeah. about the Elder Titan. Deleted all of it with <laughs> minus one out of six. <laughs> it was a joke. Yeah, Cinderin. it was a good Do you joke. know what that is? No, You're not really. supposed to say good one as Whisper good one. was disposed. Good one, Whisper. Now he'll be decrept by his teammate. Uh, Doom seems to be the most common offlane pick right now. At least from the past week or so. Yeah, so when that EG, gets through consistently. EG gave it away three games in a row last night against Bet Boom. And now they're just going to pick it. And now they're first phasing it. They just had enough. They're like, okay, we tried two different solutions to this hero. We beat it once. We lost twice. We've. It, it's just too hard to manage. Um, and will be interesting to see how a PSGLGD deal with that with their Marcy pick. Seems like that's a big part of the reason they chose this hero this game. They like playing that on Shiro when he has a Mela versus Melee offlane matchup. Which is honestly most offlaners in this patch right now are melee, to be fair, so. But yeah. Opting to pick it into Pugna is interesting. The panel talked about Decrepify as a really good Marcy counter. Yep. Until Nullifier comes out. Um, and Shiro has most of the time gone for that battle fear, and if he does that again this game, the pace of the game is going to be a little bit slow from LGD, because sure, Brood and Primal Beast can terrorize the map, but Marcy has quite a bit of build up time if it's the Fury first. And I will say, I'm not saying this is the reason they picked this, these heroes, but if you're going to have a slow start to the game with a carry, what is the biggest trouble that teams have been having this game with a lead? And that's going high ground yeah. without getting second and third rush. Techies, Elder Titan, high ground. That <laughs> is very obnoxious. Absolutely. I feel like high ground defense might be one of the most important things in this patch now. Just based on the last few weeks of how Dota's looked, at least to me. Yeah. Either that or teams are going to slow things down further when ahead, and they're just going to play the map for 20 minutes, which is would be an unfortunate development for a lot of viewers. I think they, you know you like the you like the action. It can be you can appreciate some good strategy and some split pushing here, there, and whatnot. But 
a lot of the time, when one team is just constricted in their base for an eternity and the other one's just farming the map, it's not particularly interesting to watch, but the teams are going to do what wins. And if that's what it's got to take, then I don't blame them for playing the best way. <laughs> like, they're competitors. Yep, for sure. So, nothing to say. Is playing the Primal Beast in the mid lane, about to hit level 5. Uh, pretty much identical CS with C Smile. Yeah. Not sure how this matchup usually goes, but oh, top lane, Picasso, sticky bomb applied, and that's going to be first blood going the way of Planet. Matthew TP's in to try to get some sort of residual, but they're going to lose another member. He's going to get blood grenaded as well, and the sticky bomb will slow him down. This could be three kills going the way of PSG LGD. Echo Stomp does connect. Now they're going to surround him again. Another blood grenade, I believe, and this will be a slow one. But they will find him in the end, so three kills out of nowhere for LGD. Awesome rotation from Y. That's just perfect. You can't get much more than that out of that. Triple kill with that rotate. And I believe the first blood went to Techie, so he's actually... This hero is really good when it gets gold. So, if I think in this patch, if you have a four that you want to find some farm on, Techies is definitely well up there on my list. Whenever <laughs> what is see, going on? <laughs> the middle lane has moved. That was part of the patch, by the way, in case you missed it. It is now in this uh, jungle area. There's nothing to say getting chased by C-Smile, but no kill will come from it. Kind of close, though. He's going to get his bottle refilled now that his yeah. lane was disrupted so much from C-Smile. I feel like we've seen a lot of games where the losing team with techies, the techies will be top two damage, if not number one. So this hero with farm is... You, you get a lot of bang for your buck, so to speak, compared to a lot of other fours that might offer a different amount of utility. It's just... Techies is just such an insane pick for multiple reasons. Oh, nice blast up. off. And here comes the Onslaught Trample combo from Nothing to Say. And Picasso, despite being in Metaform, gets run down. Yeah, that's that's pretty ugly. Hoping for them that they this can get a return This would be here. a good return kill, but the Pulverize coming out to delay things. Nothing to Say. That breaks the Flame Guard. Should keep him alive He's going to get chased. He smile. The uproar is popped, and that's going to slow him to a crawl. So LGD again getting away with murder. Yeah. Primal Beast thing. Primal Beast is amazing at killing Terrorblade in the early game. It's actually one of Terrorblade's when Primal Beast was played mo mostly as an offlaner, this was one of Terrorblade's number one worst matchups because you have insane amounts of magic damage that Terrorblade has nothing against. And you're just fast enough to just stay on him. So when they connect like that with the blast off into the onslaught, Hakaz is just gonna die. And it, it's gonna be like this way for a while. Oh my god, if he's gonna oh, die. Hakaz, you cannot afford to die again. He's it's a actually goner. gonna be a super easy one, but C Smile has come with that double damage, and Hakaz ticking away ever so slowly. Live. He's actually gonna live thanks to the rotations of the rest of EG. He's dead. But the onslaught <laughs> comes in. Trample does finish the job. Nothing to say. Gets off the Pulverize as well. Can they actually turn this around to the C-Smile? He's getting extremely low. Puts out a Remnant, but he's just going to die to the casual right clicks. And look who's come to play. It is Shiro with the Unleash with the worst rebound I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. He finds the Dispose and finds the kill onto Panda. This is, uh, this is the kind of game that Brood loves. Everyone is coming to Brood's lane to just absolutely body Pekaz. 4,000 lead minute 7? Yes. As much as you want to theorycraft how this game goes on when it goes to the later stage, it doesn't really matter if you don't even get to play Dota. Like, EG's lineup, their two supports as well as Terrorblade, are very level reliant in being able to accomplish things. And now that they've been run over at every turn by PSGLGD's rotations, I'm a little bit worried for them about how much weight C Smile is going to have to carry for the next 10 minutes. Like, he, he wants to play with his Skyrath to find kills. He wants to play with that Pugna and ensure that Terrorblade can go to the jungle, but... The map is already breaking eight minutes in. Gonna have to be really, really wise about your next moves. Before eight it all minute falls rune apart. about to come up. It's just illusions, but actually it's pretty good. It ends up dispelling the searing chains, and they had a nice blast off pulverized combination. But C Smile able to remnant away. Nothing just taking really low. Has to be kind of a huge stack here as well. <laughs> what the hell? He's likely gonna get chased by C Smile, who's also dying to the creeps. The spiderlings chasing. In addition, will remnant back. And it's getting chased now by two illusions of nothing to say. And somehow, after all that, only one kill. Nothing to say is going to be spotted, but we'll be able to TP out. No level. C -Smile okay, C-Smile does, does end up dropping. 
man, this is a rough early game. And we are talking about it earlier that EG, they do have a lot of experience coming back from behind, but this is not only a lot, oh even God. for them, Pekaz as Pekaz, died is that again. the fourth death? This is Pakaz's worst game of the tournament already. Wow. He is just having nothing. He's sixth on net worth and completely obliterated. We were talking about this last night. We were like, the, what's really oppressive about Pakaz's play is that when EG have been behind, he's consistently been number one net worth in the game. Win or lose, he's been really good at finding farm. This time around, <laughs> that is, could not be farther he from the truth. He has treads. He's almost below the enemy four, minute nine. This is really, really dire straits for him, and you're going to see the play here from Shiro gets that. Oh, my Simple God. Simple Dispose Unleash. He's not even level six. Yep. Can't Sunder. Can't I mean, sunder. normally you wouldn't even want to get Sunder level six. Whisper. Nice side Onslaught's going to not hit. Nice Hurricane from Whisper, and that's going to be enough for him to get away. So Well played there. Silver linings here for EG. But again, like I was saying, they've... I oh, can't even dies. speak. He Because... Because... My goodness! That is death number five. He's still level five. Techies is going to overtake him soon, Shannon. Yes. This is a special. Yeah, I guess uh, good for a lot of the fans out there that there's no fantasy for this. Uh, <laughs> you'll be giving negative points like He's you in the little remnant back. bounty hunter game. Looks like he'll be fine. I mean, how much? Hey. Again. I'm trying to get this thought out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because dies every time I say something, so I kind of don't want to talk. EG does have experience coming from behind, but this is against heroes that you probably haven't played against, like you mentioned. That probably makes it even more difficult, I would assume. This lineup is insanely oppressive when it's ahead. Brood has always been a nightmare to play against when you lose your lanes, because he just takes over a lot of the map. Panda. He spotted Echo Stomp is going to hit. Unleash now. Going to be used onto Matt. Oh, Pakaz. Pakaz comes in. He's still level freaking five. Will he be able to get away attempting to TP out? But the R Splitter finishes him. Oh my goodness. They finally kill. Nothing to say. He's worth a thousand gold at the 11 minute mark. But EG, they're losing everyone. C Smile, the last remaining member, gets disposed back into the mines. Wow. <laughs> this is disgusting to watch. I'm trying to come up with an analogy for this <laughs> without using my bi basketball reference from yesterday. What was your basketball reference? Me versus Michael Jordan. Oh. This is what it feels like right now. It's like LGD, the elite squad, playing it. Oh, no. Oh, okay. I'll just, I'll just shut up. Is he going to hit level six this game? I want Picasso. My actually goodness! What is... <laughs> this is insane! And Panda's gonna drop as well. Nothing to say looks relatively healthy. Whisper, he's level 8 compared to his level 5 position 1. I... I literally cannot think of a time in all my years of casting that I've seen anything like this. A level 5 position 1 at almost 12 minutes on any patch. This has wisdom runes. <laughs> On any patch, I'm saying. See Smile now. Has the Flame Guard activated. See the Brute. Oh, I just realized. He's in a bit of trouble change. now. Brought back. Okay. And brought down. But the Pulverize coming in. Okay. Nothing to say feeds his life away. They're getting a little overconfident now, it seems. Yep. Want to keep it interesting. Arcane Room picked up by Matthew. Looks like YU Smile is going to be able to walk it off. All right, so a moment ago, Picasso was below the enemy five. He hit level six, by the way. In net worth. But because of this, he got a little bit of time, and he's actually starting. He's going Midas on Terrorblade. Yeah. That is a bad look. <laughs> this hero <laughs> is not a Midas hero. Mm. But it's like, it's complete desperation mode for EG. He's like, guys, I'm checked out. Good luck. I'm not going to offer you anything for the next 20 minutes. You're going to have to handle this without me. And obviously, he's not going to be catching up to the Marcian farm, because even though Terrorblade theoretically is the one of the best farmers in the game by split pushing the map with illusions when you're this far behind and Marcy has a battle fury he's gonna outpace you anyway oh whisper yeah uh, whisper getting spotted will hurricane but dies shortly after another unleash Matthew will be the recipient of the power punches from Marcy and the rebound into a potential kill because still doesn't have thunder so that is death number eight Wow. Well. The fact that he's even crossing the middle section of the map is shocking to me. 
Panda will drop. See Smile can only look on and get pulverized now. I think the Earth Splitter actually connected in the blast off as well. Great layering from PSG LGD as they have a 10k lead. This is the biggest stomp of the entire tournament, right? Like, we have not, yeah. at least we've not cast a game that was this lopsided, and I, I don't know if there's been one. It's just, it's also, it's just one of those things where when the lanes go like this and you look at the lineups, it's almost an inevit inevitability at this level. Because, like, the one side has Brood, Elder Titan, and Primal Beast just gonna, and even Marcy, just gonna run at you all over the map, and they're gonna have the vision and the information with the heroes that they have. So every time you turn a corner, you can just get killed by literally anything. There's nowhere that's safe. You own, like, maybe 30% of the map. Like, if you just look how green this map is right now, you've lost your Tier 1 towers. You've lost full control. Like, I, I, I like this from EG. Like, you got yeah, to try smoke. To that contest their own stack. Pulverized into the Mystic Clear. Doing a lot of damage to see Smile as finally the Doom comes out. And it's on that Primal Beast, but... I think this thing oh, might just be God. able to walk away as C Smile did drop. And Shiro trying to kill Doom, who is still pursuing this kill, which he will eventually find, but it will cost him his life, but easily worth it for Whisper. As the Echo Stomp comes out, getting another stun, Matthew. And for once, the one person that didn't die is Picaz because he wasn't even there. Yeah, and he can't be. His hero is useless in fights. There is no other play on the map than hit creeps, and you got eight creeps for. Yeah. GG's call. I, 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 I can't blame I, I don't, this. I don't mind it. Just go next. Like, wow. This is absolutely. They crossed the 15 minute mark. The magic number. I don't know if this is like a team, uh, some sort of.